Hallelujah. So many folk have opinions of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But to experience him for yourself. Yes, yeah. My God, my God. I'm going to do what I was told to do and get out of your way because today's not my day. Amen. It's the better half day. All right. And then a lot of you all know her. But if I was to give her a formal introduction, Tara is the quiet one. I'm the loud, obnoxious, well, well, individual of the family. <laughs> Tara is the quiet, reserved. She's the more stand offish in the corner, go in the cave and pray individual. All right. <clears throat> Tara's been ministering now for 11 years. Praise God. Um, when she first started ministering, I'm about to tell her that she said, I can't stay on the phone. I still say that. <laughs> she didn't want to preach to the adults because the adults didn't pay attention. Well. The adults are the ones she couldn't stand. She wanted the kids like Angie. She had kids all around her. And she was the mama of the church. She had everybody's babies, everybody's kids. Everybody was calling her mama. Everywhere we went, they thought she had all these kids like the old woman that lived in the shoe. <laughs> Tara was just clinging to everybody's babies. <laughs> Tara has a dynamic mind ministry um, that just express, expresses her love and her worship to the Father. Tara is one that if God has not spoke to her, she will not get up behind this pulpit and speak to you. It don't matter if you call her and ask her to come preach a revival, a conference, a special service. If God has not spoke to her, she will sit right there until she hears from heaven. It don't matter if you're waiting on the next great word, she's not going to get up here. Tara is one that will get in the room, close the door, turn on her worship music, and if God ain't spoke, she still ain't coming out. <laughs> she will wait till the very last minute to get a definite word from the Lord. God uses Tara in many different and unique ways. She's not like everybody else. When God made her, he crushed the mold. So I tell you today, expect the unexpected. Don't just come in looking for church as usual, because you never know how God's going to use her, or where God's going to take her, or what God may do through her while she's up here. But get ready, because there is a word from the Lord. She is a praying woman. She's a woman that stays in the face of Jesus. She's a woman that has a heart for the people and a woman with the word for God's people on today. Let's receive her as she comes. Salvation upon his head, 
and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a club. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the owls he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and upon them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of the seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth, now and forever. Father, I thank you, I give you glory, I give you honor, and I give you praise. Father God, this is your day, and Father, I just ask that you speak through me and hide me, Father God, that they do not see me, but all of you. Father, your word is blessed, and I give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I really, I had to wrestle with this, because, like I said, I wanted to talk about his promises so bad. But this week mm -hmm. whew, has been a tough week. Oh, and no. so I was really focused on his promises. But I kept hearing Isaiah 19, how even through whatever you're going through, he is always there. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so 17, he, you know, he talks about putting on his breastplate of righteousness and his helmet. And I had to, and, and I was like, huh, wait, you, you know, because we always talk about, in Ephesians 6, how we talk about, you know, put on our breast, you know, our armor. And I was like, wait a minute, let me go back and read that. And I had to laugh at myself because for so many times we read the word of God and, you know, we don't, I don't think we really paid attention that it was his. Uh-huh. It's his. It's his. He just let us use it. It's not ours. It's his. Mm -hmm. So he can put it on if he wants to and come down and save us. But we too lazy to save ourselves. Amen. Or we too busy looking for a man to save us. Oh, well, yeah. I love Bishop. And I love First Lady. But. Brother and sis. And I love my husband. But guess what? That's right. They can't save me. That's right. <laughs> And if I focus on them too hard, I'll be in a world of trouble and get myself in trouble. Mm -hmm. So we better get our eyes off of man, because that's how we end up letting the enemy come in. Come on, man. And then we got to look to the Lord to lift up that standard and say, that. <laughs> verse 19. <laughs> Guess what? That's what that is. When we let care after care, mm -hmm. trouble after trouble, come on, man. even our health, because God knows. We got enough. Mm -hmm. And even when our family members go through and they want to put it right there. Come on. Man. And we carry it because we don't we don't tell them you need to go to the Lord for yourself. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. We want to carry it and go to the Lord for them. Guess what? Child, that don't work. <laughs> we we can pray for them, but uh -huh. we gotta teach them to go to the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because if they don't have that own relationship, guess what? It ain't gonna do no good. He'll lift up that Savior. He, he'll, he'll come in. He'll, he'll do it because that's his word. That's mm -hmm. right. Because he's going to honor them for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we still need them to be saved. That's right. We Amen. still need them to have that relationship with him. That's and I had to laugh at you this morning because you read Romans 8 and 37. All right. <laughs> Confirmation. Nay. In all these things, yes. we are more than conquerors yes. through him that loves us. And he does. Yes, Lord. Thank you. And we are conquerors. But guess what? If we don't fight, he'll fight for us. Yes, he will. But he wants us to do it together. Amen. It's teamwork. Yes. That's right. Just like a marriage. It's teamwork. Yes. That's our first love. That's Come on, right. man. Come on. 
Lord. Amen. You love him, but guess what? I bet you you love the Lord more. Amen. 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 I love him, but I love the Lord more. Amen. Come on now. Before he gets out of the bed, I've already talked to the Lord. Thank Amen. You. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yes. He has to be first. Amen. Number one. First. First and mm -hmm. foremost. Mm -hmm. Teamwork, guys. Teamwork. Let him build it up. Raise up that standard. But guys, if we don't fight, he gonna fight for us. Come on now. He gonna put that, he's gonna put on that armor. His armor. It's not ours. He's gonna put on the armor. He's gonna fight for us. He's gonna and he's gonna win. The enemy don't stand a chance. It don't matter what he throws at you, left, right. He don't, he throw that left hood, throw that right hood, and throw that uppercut. But guess hey, what? Hey. The Lord is always going to win. Hey. There is nothing that the enemy can throw at you that is ever going to take you out. Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> don't ever let him think he's going to win because he can't. Okay. God will always win. What he always win. What he There's never a battle that he will lose. Come on, man. Never. Amen. So, guys, I encourage you to keep your head up. 